And hello everybody, welcome back. So today we want to continue on our turbulence modeling uh, videos. Now in the last video, we have uh, substituted in, uh, you know, how um, our instantaneous velocity, our instantaneous velocity can be uh, represented by some time averaged or some average velocity. And then there's the fluctuating part of the velocity. velocity. How does this look like on a graph? <coughs> Excuse me. How does this look, kind of look like on a graph? Well, if you have the velocity u, and it's going up and down like that, we can see that the average is represented by some kind of a black line, which kind of <coughs> doesn't uh, take into account all these little fluctuations. However, it's still an uh, average that's enough to capture the trend of the system. So, over here, the velocity is fluctuating up and down, Yes, but on average, it's rising up to this point here. And then after that, after some time, the velocity is still fluctuating, but on average, it's going to dip to this point, and so on and so forth. So how, uh, so we need to average the velocity over some small period of time, for example, from here to here, but it cannot be a period of time so long that we don't see this trend of the overall average velocity going up and down. So these are some of the guidelines with respect to you know how you average time average your velocity. And this is also known as Reynolds average. Okay, so how do we have a average velocity? So let's define u bar equals to 1 by tau, where tau is some uh, time, all right, some time interval. So you have the integral from t up to, okay, integral from t to t plus tau. So you integrate with respect to time. So we may have a dummy variable, t prime here. Okay, whichever. Uh, so by right, there's supposed to be some dummy var variable. Okay, so or maybe let's let's give it a time period of uh, a. All right, then we'll use tau to denote the time period or the dummy variable, so to speak. So t tau is like some dummy variable, and a is the time period. Or maybe you put t to make less confusion. T is the time period, the big letter T. So tau is some uh, some uh, time variable, dummy variable. So we have the integral of d tau into u. And that is what the average velocity is about. So you kind of integrate over time, over some short period of time t, where we have the t being short enough to capture you know, the overall movement of the velocity and yet long enough to get rid of these uh, little fluctuations that we don't want to see in turbulence. So this is uh, at what averaging is about. And we want to do a time average of our, of our uh, mass balance, mass balance. So the time average of all of these is naturally just the bar all right, so this is the instantaneous velocity uh, sum up together. So we have the u and the fluctuating part of u. But we know that the time average, if we do this time averaging all over this equation here, these terms will stay because, uh, you know, averaging, averaging the instantaneous velocity will allow these things to stay. However, if we have a time average of all of these, uh, u prime, v prime, and w prime, all disappear. So this is after time averaging the continuity equation looks like so. Well, that makes sense so far. Okay so next thing we also have to time average is this. Right? We also have to time average Our uh, velocity, uh, no momentum, 
balance. Alright, time average on momentum balance. Okay, so how are we going to do it? Well, these terms on the left are relatively easy to time average. So we know that the time average, I mean with using this uh, del square kind of an operator, that just means uh, the second derivative with respect to x, y, and z. So if you have a time average of this, it's likely that this term will dis disappear. And this term will also disappear. Okay, so the left hand side is pretty straightforward. Now the tricky bit, the tricky bit comes to the right hand side. Okay, the right hand side is as follows. Okay, so you have the time average of this. Alright, and that's fine and dandy because it's linear. So you have the time average of this, you, you will have just uh, u bar on this term but you'll have these three terms which are going to be very much non-linear so we'll have to expand this out one by one and see what happens so we have this going on so I'm just going to do it like so all right. Okay, so um, if you're going to time average uh, this, okay, we're going to time average this. Uh, we've got to expand out all these terms first. So let's expand out the terms. So on the left hand side, you have u bar partial by partial x u bar. Okay, plus u bar partial by partial x u prime. Next, you have a u prime partial by partial x u okay prime. Next, I'll just get this to the bottom. Partial by partial x of u bar. Alright. And the last one, u prime partial by partial x. Of u prime. Alright. So so let's say now we want a time average of this, right? Time average of this pretty straightforward. So we're going to time average. Okay, this one you'll go examine term by term. It's just going to stay the same because this is. Uh, this is simply a yeah this is simply just an average already so the average of the average is just the average all right so uh, time average after time averaging this is what remains now the trickier bit is with these two these two terms or rather let's do it one at a time then how are you going to aver time average this well, uh, let's apply the operator. Alright. We've got to average this term. And what will what will happen? We realize that in the limit of this time uh, u in the limit of this uh, time this short time t, this u is actually a constant. So I can just put an equal sign. I can bring this u out. And then all I remain, all that remains is
it is this now it is this uh, del by del x u prime with respect to time now of course if uh, if we have this with respect to time uh, this this is likely to just drop to zero because the fluctuate the fluctuations uh, with respect to time they kind of tend to zero um, and sometimes you can that there are some special rules for us to bring this integrant into this uh, differential so let me show you what I mean sometimes you can do this not all the time So you can take the differential outside and bring the integrant inside. That is if it, uh, yeah, if these two um, if these two uh, variables are not very dependent on each other, you can do this kind of thing. Now, of course, um, yeah, we'll need to explore some conditions where we can do this kind of thing. But for now, I'm just going to assume that we can. And yep, we see this actually going on in the paper like this. Uh, I'm not going to elaborate too much. You can, I can put this, I put this uh, inside some of the comment section. No, not the comment section. Description. So I'm going to put this link there. Go and look at it yourself. See whether it really applies to this case. So assuming you can, um, you'll find out that this term, if we can do this, this term basically drops to zero. So this is gone. Now, uh, can we do the same for this? Yeah, we can do the same. Same thing where we just do the, the time average. And this uh, relation is uh, given. And in the limit of the, the value, um, in the limit of t, the period t this should be a constant because this is just the velocity grade average velocity gradient with respect to x it should not vary in this uh, average time you know so i'm going to very quickly just bring this out and we are going to be left we're going to be left with uh, this And then we realize that this term also drops to zero, which is a comforting fact. So at the end of the day, after time arranging, only these two terms remain. All right. And this term will be a sort of a time averaged uh, term. Okay. So I can just put a... Uh, sort of something like this where I have a whole bracket and I'll just put a bar on top so that's how we you know, begin our time averaging thingy so of course we'll need to do that for the rest of the coordinates and we'll do that in the next video hope you found this helpful I'll see you guys next time